I found myself more reflexively reaching for a glass of wine during, and frankly, I think probably more so to this day than, than I would have historically, right? I think I probably consume four or five glasses of wine a week right now, Matt, whereas historically it would have been four or five glasses a month. And I would say during the height of sort of my anxiety around some of the aspects of COVID, I was probably drinking a glass to sometimes two every single night. And I just know from my own tracking of sleep, which is primarily based on the aura, which I need to disclose, I'm both an investor in aura and an advisor to them. So please understand and take anything I say about aura with a grain of salt. But I think the aura provides a very good stream of data on metrics around sleep, particularly time in bed or time sleeping and the variables that drive some of the interpretations of stages, namely heart rate, heart rate variability, temperature, and respiratory rate. And without exception, Matt, every time I drink alcohol, especially if it's going to hit two drinks in a night, every one of those variables moves in the wrong direction. Yeah, Heart rate variability gets crushed. Resting heart rate goes up by 10, if not 20, 25%. Respiratory rate is up two breaths per minute and core body temperature is up half a degree. That coupled with what I remember of our first discussion, which is alcohol disproportionately impacts negatively REM, creates kind of an ironic situation, which is I'm probably numbing a little bit of my anxiety with alcohol, which is impairing my ability to have REM sleep, which is paradoxically exactly the medicine I need. Yeah, that's exactly the interpretation I would offer. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you're right. Firstly, you know, one of the problems with alcohol is that it's a sedative. And what most people think of as the benefit of a nightcap for your sleep is not really a benefit. Yes, you quote unquote, well, I'll say (laughs) you lose consciousness faster (laughs) when you put yourself in bed. Uh, It's hard to say that you're going into naturalistic sleep. Your sleep becomes more fragmented because the alcohol will actually stimulate the fight or flight branch of the nervous system. It also releases wake promoting chemicals. That's why you wake up more frequently. And then the third part is alcohol will decrease the amount of REM sleep that you get, particularly in the middle um, towards the later hours. And of course, as you said there, what's happening very understandably is that you're trying to find a way to manage your anxiety. And by the way, as a parent, I don't even know how much of it is about anxiety around coronavirus as it is anxiety around kids or other things that are the response to coronavirus, as you said, your job. Again, your your kids are going crazy being home in front of Zoom 24-7. I mean, it's sometimes you don't even realize what it is that you're reaching for that drink for. But, you know, my wife and I will constantly joke, like, is it five o'clock yet? Is it five o'clock yet? Like, it's got to be five o'clock somewhere in the world, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like you just... And it's, it's weird because neither of us are the type of people who, like we could easily go two months without having a drink and not notice. So there's just been something particularly challenging about the last six months that I think have led to just more frequently that type of behavior. And I, you know, I say that not trying to be too judgmental of myself just as an observation, but I'm guessing I'm not the only one that's gone through this. Yeah. And I have a huge degree of sympathy for that situation you know everyone has this cabin fever and then you put together three kids and as you mentioned there too there is this self-fulfilling prophecy where if you're downscaling the amount of REM sleep that you get at night with alcohol you may not be getting the necessary emotional benefit that you need to de-risk the emotional experiences and the anxiety that's building up so then the next day the anxiety is not dealt with, it's overlaid and then added to by the following day. And so you're feeling even more anxious the following night. And then you find yourself reaching for another glass of wine, which then takes away the REM sleep once again. And so goes the spiral of escalation. So again, it's, I'm not trying to be at all judgmental. I'm just a scientist. I, I'm not here to be puritanical about life. Life is to be lived to a degree. And I don't want to tell anyone how to live their life I think what we're just trying to do here is describe the consequences of these things on sleep so that people can be informed and make their own life choices as to what they would like to do. Now, Matt, one of the things I have the luxury of doing is looking at the aura data of all of my patients who wear an aura ring and who are in our portal. 
And I will say this, when I couple that ability with the ability to speak with them, I've noticed not all people are the same. I really think there are some people for whom alcohol does not seem to have that negative effect. Like for example, in me, one drink doesn't really seem to have a negative effect provided it's around 6 p.m. and I'm going to bed at 9 p.m. But two drinks does have the effect. I've seen patients for whom two drinks has no effect. And when I've had this discussion with them about, hey, you know, really from a, from a scientific standpoint, it would be great if you drank less for reasons X, Y, and Z. Their counter argument is, well, the relief that comes from the alcohol, the true release of stress may justify it. And, and, and I guess I've come to realize that every one of these things has to be taken on a case by case basis. But when it pertains to sleep, would you agree with potentially my observation that people are not all identical in this regard as well? hundred percent. And I think, in fact, if you do some of these genetic testing companies that are out there, they will describe to you whether you're a fast metabolizer of alcohol. You know, there's a genetic basis to it. It's the same with caffeine. So you're completely right that there is an average adult that we will typically speak about when we speak about, you know, large scale, be it epidemiological studies, which we're both not necessarily a fan of, or even any studies. And we offer recommendations. This is for your average adult, but everyone is unique in that sense. And so there absolutely will be some people one side of the distribution who don't show that response to alcohol because maybe they're a fast metabolizer and they have a drink at 7 p.m. And by the time it's their turn on their sleep schedule to be in the position to start receiving and chowing down on REM sleep from that, that buffet, most of the the aldehydes and the ketones are now, you know, long gone and not impacting their sleep, which are the metabolic consequences of sort of alcohol degradation. And those are the things that seem to impact your REM sleep. So I, I, I believe that there are definitely that cluster of people. And then equally, there are folks on the other side who can have, you know, a glass of wine with a late lunch and it still could crush their REM sleep. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 